Hello YouTube, just guys Customs here, another video, like, share, comment, follow, all that type of stuff, everyone's already doing it. Uh, in this video I'm going to take on my first diff build, I've uh, been wanting to do this for a long time, um, just with some resources and that slowing me up, but uh, this is a strange 9-inch um, diff housing, uh, bought from Rocket Industries, as you can see, pretty, pretty bare, um, well built but it's got a lot of internal gussets and everything which is nice, I'm going to head clean up all these welds, um, a little bit of corner welds, just going to blend them in so it all looks pretty uniform. Uh, I got three inch axle tubes for it, um, nice 250 wall stuff, so it's nice, thick, strong. Uh, I used the jig off a diff I had in the shop built from another shop uh, on one of the other builds, and uh, so I made the jig off that. Um, so it's this bolts to it, uh, big C channels like 300 mil uh, by 90 mil, 8 mil plate, so it shouldn't shouldn't bend very easily um, and obviously just made out some cheap engine stands and super cheap I mask it up um, so it rotates around so I can put it in whatever position I want to weld which is pretty cool uh, but there this video is going to be very much like a lot hands on -y. I know like a lot of my previous videos are a bit after the fact uh, I think a lot of people kind of got the impression that I wasn't doing my own work um, so this is kind of like a, a little bit of video to show people like me actually going at it um so yeah but anyway uh i'll stop talking because i actually hate this and i just want to start make some noise in the fab, se the fab section of the shop thanks again hope everyone likes the video i'll do an outro shit later and probably show you what i did last week on the computer It's all sanded up real good, pretty happy. Uh, as you would have noticed from the videos, uh, I went ahead and sanded all the flat edges first. Um, side, 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 and then that builds my corner up. And then I went ahead and used the flat disc uh, and then created, continued the, rad excuse me, the radius uh, from this existing edge. Um, so I basically started by blending in the center first once I blended that in, then I then went to uh, bottom edge, top edge, just sand that all in. Um, created the corners here, pretty nice. Uh, that one sanded out good. I got got some low spots here. I'm gonna just just quickly tig up. Um, I just wanted to feather out this big weld a little bit. Um, it'll come up nice after I orbit a little. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the tig out now and just. Get rid of these real quick. Uh, I used um, 60 grit and 50 grit, uh, 60 on the five inch on a flat disc, and then I used uh, 50 grit on the little two inch. Uh, I just like the little two inch for getting in. It's pretty nice, controllable. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's starting to look a lot better already. Uh, and then yeah. So this is the low. I'm just gonna just gonna tig up. Um, I'll put a straight edge across it just to see if it was low, and it definitely was. Um, so I've just got the welder set, pretty low, it's only at like at 107. Um, I'm just rolling with my foot pedal or Nova wireless thing. Uh, I was welding supply cells on, they're pretty good. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to pump a bit of filler in it. It doesn't have to be pretty, but uh, this is always a good opportunity for anyone just starting off, is just to practice stacking damn dimes. However you want to say it, I don't know. So yeah, I'll just pump it in, then I'll sand it out later. It'll be pretty good. I'm sure I got my gas on. Yep. A bit embarrassing. Probably not even on. Probably left every gas in the area. Consistency is the key on this because otherwise it'll stand out like crap.
wear safety gloves and stuff, it does get pretty hot. But because it's Monday and I don't care about my body today, I am just doing what's necessary. So yeah, just wanted to add like a little bit extra meat. I always hate um, having to come back and add more after the fact. I'd rather just put a little bit extra on there now and then sand it back better up. Sand it out nice and easy. That is still a bit hot when I touch that. Uh, but yeah, so I got the radius area put in. There's a little, little pinhole there, which is, and I know it's gonna bug me, but there is going to be a brace that goes over here, so we'll cover it, but I just didn't want any big ugliness. Um, I like everything nice and clean from the bottom up. So I'm going to go ahead and rip out the orbital sander um, with some 1680 grit, and then I'll just scotch it after it and it should come up pretty nice, I would say. Sixty gridded this mother uh, radius just turned out sick. I always use nice heavy grip because it kind of like you can feather that radius a lot heavier. Uh, really blend it in real good. As you can see here, from just from where these were stamped out, it's just a bit bit on the wobbly. So I'm just going to get my little two inch sanding disc and just go ahead and uh, just sand them out. I'll at least feather them out best I can. Uh, just so it looks a bit nicer. Uh, I definitely prefer to do this in metal, in the metalwork side rather than trying to do Bondo because I don't do Bondo, I'll tell you that right now. I do not do bodywork. I don't care how much people are paying me, it's never going to happen. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get a little 2-inch and sand all those little bits and pieces out. She'll uh, be ready for another 60 grit just to get them out and then I can go 80 and start really making this thing look porno. more happy than that. They could probably do it with another pass I reckon but for for this I reckon we'll leave it. We'll just go straight to the 80 grit, get it all done and then later on on final uh, final fitment work and everything because there's still gonna be like a bracket that's still gonna go over the top of here for the wishbone uh, so I'll clean up hide most of that uh, and then the diff brace will go on that and it's, it's gonna have to be a drain plug and a fill plug. So after everything's still sort of added to it, I'll go ahead and uh, do all the final metal work on it, obviously, before we start thinking about paint and powder coat. There it is, 80 grit. Look how nice it looks through the camera. But truth be told, it's still like, Still some little scratches and everything in it. It's a little bit of a smoke and mirror trick for you. Come back, get the light in right, get the light in right. Oh, there's the spot. Look how perfect an Instagram that is. Mad. So I don't like orbital marks at all. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a bit of scotch bright and I'm just gonna put a grain in it. Um, looks a lot cleaner, a lot nicer, um, but yeah, this back part of it's already, I can go ahead and start prepping the tubes next after I give this a little bit of a ding dong and um, bolt it all down, give me some measurements, throw some tacks on it. Uh, as you can see here, I still haven't done these top sides, which is fine. I'm going to wait and get the axle tubes in first and then I can put it on a jack stand and spin it around real good like. Um, but pretty happy with how it's turning out. It's looking pretty nice. A bit more, uh, bit more quality based. Um, looks like everything else in the shop. Yeah, there's an exercise and a straightening the union of mm, at the end of words. Striving, dividing and sliding and falling and brawling and sprawling and driving and riding and 
All right, axle tubes all cleaned up. Uh, housings, nice. Other axle tube all clamped down into place. Uh, that's the centers obviously bolted to the table as well. Um, and geez, it looks looks pretty pretty good. I think I'm just about ready to start welding this thing up. Um, let's see if I can do this one here. Seems to be. <sighs> There we go. So not only is it good for positions, obviously this little part gets welded here. So that's why I did the cutouts. Uh, so I got good access to that. So the dip doesn't need to come off this jig at all during welding, which is nice. It moves around pretty easy. Make a lure around myself. So it's nice and up there. I can start in the corner here, burn it all out. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty happy with that. Should uh, weld up pretty nice. Um, these clamps, clamping it all against uh, my centralization jigs, as I will call them. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go have something to eat. Um, as you can see, like I've swept up and everything. This is like my little routine before I start welding. I always sweep up after all the fab sections done. It's ready to be have the welder plugged in. Um, and obviously I like to be nice and comfortable, so I'm gonna go have something to eat now. So I don't find myself rushing because I'm hungry. Um, I know welding doesn't take that long compared to the rest of the fab stuff, but it is at the end of the day, the most important part. So I like to get it right. So gonna go have four to six sandwiches and uh, get back here and plug that Unimig welder in and. Let it eat. All right, I'm fed, I'm happy, I'm relaxed. Um, did a little bit of off screen, off camera tacking, uh, just the axle tubes, the housing. Just want to get a bit of a feel for the temperature, what I can kind of get away with. Um, I watched a video once that told me um, 0.120 wall is like 120 amps, or it was like 0.18 wall to be like 180 amps. Uh, and I always find that gets me real close in like good ballpark. Uh, as far as amps are concerned. Uh, my foot pedal doesn't have any range in it, it's just a pure on and off switch, just because I don't like to have my hand um, cramped up like on a trigger the whole time. So that's how I got it like that. Uh, but anyway, I'm pretty happy, like the fitment's pretty good. Uh, there's a couple of like, a little bit of uh, misalignment issues, um, just the way the housing was made, obviously they're mass reduced. Um, so I really wasn't expecting anything super perfect from it. So I'm going to go ahead and run uh, a big root pass all the way through uh, on both, both sides. Uh, also on the underside as well. After that's done, then I'm just going to put down to like a nice pulse setting. And then I'm just going to put a big bit of a hotter uh, pulse over the top of it just to blend it all in. Um, give it like a lot more, a lot more structure, a lot more shoulder. Because um, the way a second pass works is it kind of gussets the weld. Um, like from material to material by leaving the root one to sort of really grasp the uh, the material the first time and that's my understanding of it so that's why I tend to do it and uh, yeah that's what's going to go on um, well to set up I've sharpened a couple of tungstens uh, just to save me going back and forth to the uh, grinder so yeah I'm ready to send it bit of fun got some real nice color which is always a good indication of uh, my amps are pretty good uh, that was about 120 amp and that was actually 120 amps on the old Unimig uh, razor good little welder that so easy to set up it's great um, then with the foot pedal like I said it just frees up my hand just to put into whatever position I want um, you see yeah, good color all the way around pretty happy with that should have done like a little bit more of a, uh, a test position 
on it just to figure out where I was at, but at the end I kind of found where I needed to be. Um, underside all welded up as well. On both sides there. Um, same thing, pretty good colour. Uh, normally if you're like grey, normally means you're a bit hot um, and you'll be able to tell if you're too cold because the weld stands really proud. Um, it becomes a real dome. Um, but as you can see here, it's kind of like, that's oh, horrible. Um, yeah, so it's kind of just molding into the material really good. Um, but yeah, after, the, after this cools down and I wire wheel all that colour off, um, clean it again, put a second pass down and the heat of material just to build up. It's, yeah, it's a great pass, the second one. I always do it on a pulse setting. Um, I just find it a bit more rhythmistic uh, with the second pass because I can listen to the, the tick the tick of the hot and the cold, hot and the cold, hot and the cold. And that's basically how I like played out in my head when I'm doing it. It's just like a hot and a gold tip, hot and a gold dip, hot and a cold dip, hot and a cold dip. And then that's how I set my timing up and um, you can get really consistent results with that. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just wire wheel this, clean it all up, get it ready for the second pass. Um, probably probably going to let it cool down a little bit. And if you paid attention like to the way I welded it, welded these uh, outsides first and then flipped it over on the inside, reason is um, just to stop on warping because all the material is going to shrink and it's going to try to pull the axle tubes up um, so by leaving the big heavy passes to the underside it's actually going to pull it back straight um, when I weld the underside uh, so that's kind of how that all went down um, yeah but nothing else to do but to do it all right, I'm ready for pass number two. So you can see here, just wire wheeled it all the way, uh, all the color and everything, cleans it all nice. Um, so yeah, that's that's ready to weld. My weld is set up. I've got 130 amps on there with a pulse setting. It's uh, 75%, I think it's 90 base. So it gives me like a 40 amp cool dip. And then, um, yeah, so it dips on 90, and then heat it in with 130. And it's about 1.2, 1.3, I think, one or the other. I can't remember. Um, but I know it's set up the way I want it to, so I'm gonna put this little gimbal thing down um, and get to this welding thing. See if I can uh, finish this bad boy off. Really gets the material across, gets from um, gets the corner weld to the base material real good. I kind of put like a little bit of a weave in it just to really build it up. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. For the rest of that, if I can keep stacking them like that, I'll be happy. This is uh, all welded up the second pass. Um, pretty big welds now, it's good. Like they kind of turned into a bit of a weave at a couple of points. 
I mean, you're never really going to know the difference. I'm kind of going to knock the top off a little bit of it when I hit it with the orbity, the orbital sander. Um, and then obviously like it's going to get powder, powder coated as well. So I'm not going to really notice it a lot, but like all the insides, super, super heavy gnarly. So there it is. So uh, my first dip build, I guess. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and let that fully cool down to like the touch. I'm not going to bother messing with it until it's fully, fully cool. Like, like ice cool, probably won't even touch it till tomorrow morning. But that's good. I'm pretty excited about that. Nothing really went out of play. Probably gonna end the video on this one now, like just where I am now. I'm gonna do a separate video, I think, for um, all the SolidWorks stuff. I'm working on um, some designs. At the moment, I had a lot of heavy hours on it last week. Uh, I'll probably do similar hours to it this week. Um, but yeah, no, I'm definitely, I'll do a separate video for that because you guys saw like heaps of solid work stuff in the last video. So I'll, I'll can it this. Um, like, share, follow, all that crap. Um, trying to get better at these videos. Like I've got pretty bad anxiety at the best of times. So for me to sort of like stand in front of a camera knowing that it's going to be like viewed by like heaps and heaps of people is fucking terrifying to me. Um, but I still want to bring good content to the channel and all that type of stuff. Um, cause I like what I do and I'm proud of what I do. I'm proud of the products I produce. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoy and, uh, learn, um, learn off what I'm doing. I'm just a person that's made a thousand mistakes. Learn from them. So hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes too. Thanks again guys. See you in the next video. Peace.